Hey, Internet friends, we're back at it again. I really wasn't planning on doing a follow up to my food processing plant fires video, the one I put out at the end of April, but here we are. If you want to know a little more context behind the strange coincidences of the 2022 Hunger Games, I'll link the video below. In that video, I cataloged over 20 food processing plant fires between all of 2021 and 2022 thus far. April 22nd is the day I put out that video, but since then a lot has happened. So let's not stand on ceremony, we'll just jump right in. April 22nd, nearly 3.5 million chickens were destroyed because of avian flu in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Throughout this video, you're gonna notice an uptick in the amount of chickens that are being killed as we continue on, like the like to the tune of millions and millions of chickens and turkeys and ducks in the United States. To quote, stop the spread of avian flu. And it's curious to me because prepared and cooked poultry and eggs infected with avian flu are apparently safe to eat. So did they really have to go and kill all those chickens for nothing? Like just waste them all? What was Hillary's backyard chicken sacrifice to Moloch not enough? We needed millions more. Hi, hon, can you fact check that for us, Mackenzie? PolitiFact just published an article raging over this 95 item list of food processing plant fires and poultry culling saying that while the whole list is true, it's absolutely not intentional. These fires were not set intentionally. There's, there's no evidence. Really, you guys are just mean conspiracy theorists spreading dangerous conspiracies on the internet. And the same people who brought down strong nations and empires of the past would never starve millions of people to death to get control over a country. Never. April 28th was apparently a terrible day to be a chicken because in Iowa, 5.3 million eggling chickens were killed and 200 workers were fired at Rembrandt Farms, owned by billionaire Glenn Taylor. Side note, in the month of May, a ton of chickens, ducks, and turkeys were destroyed or killed due to the avian flu. I'm not going to go through each instance individually, but I will provide the list that puts them on a timeline. Okay, back to it. On May 2nd in Ruston, Mississippi, a fire broke out at a chicken farm in Jones County. It took out two chicken houses and completely destroyed like the roofs, the chicken houses, everything. On May 19th, a freight train carrying limestone derailed in Jensen Beach, Florida. I included this on here because in a farm setting, lime will raise the pH of the soil and reduce the concentration of toxic aluminum. So it's very important for growing crops. 10 days later on May 29th, a fire killed an estimated hundreds of thousands of egg laying chickens at Forsman Farms in Howard Lake, Minnesota. According to the Forsman Farms website, the farm started in 1918, and now the fourth generation family farm sells more than 3 million eggs a day to some of the nation's largest retailers. With this next one, it's not on the master list that's going around, but I, I personally wanted to add it because it affected a major resource for farmers. On May 31st, an irrigation equipment manufacturer in Wadena, Minnesota caught fire and the warehouse burned for two days. The building was being used by Minnesota Valley Irrigation for storage and equipment operations. Moving into June, a fire occurred at the JBS Meatpacking Plant in Green Bay with nearly $30,000 in damage. A day later, on June 8th, firefighters responded to a fire at the Purina Feed Mill in Arcola, Illinois. Then on June 9th, a, a major announcement took place. Officials said to combat drought, irrigation water was canceled in California, which is the number one producer of food in the United States. So officials are barring certain cities and farms from diverting river water. River water, which was used for farmlands that grow almonds, pistachios, grapes, alfalfa for cattle, other crops. Farmers basically can't use that water anymore. And the director of water resources for the California Farm Bureau said that, that he hopes that these cuts don't lead to food shortages or significant hikes in food prices because he really doesn't want to rely on China or Mexico or South America to supply food to the United States. Then a day later on June 10th, more cuts occurred in California. This time at the Smithfield Foods in Vernon, they process pork, they process hogs. They're owned by Hong Kong-based conglomerate WH Group. And Smithfield is the largest pork processor in the country by volume. They said that production costs were just too high and they shut down the plant. 
On June 13th, a fire occurred in Belmont, Wisconsin at the Festive Foods Processing Facility, which deals mainly in frozen food items. Those were so many F words in a row. I don't know how I just got through it, but basically the frozen food plant caught on fire. And then we arrive at the big news of yesterday, June 15th. When footage of thousands of dead cows emerged on TikTok, a TikToker by the name of Barbie Doll Henderson 1973 posted a video showing thousands of cattle dead and being piled up and lined up with a bobcat. News outlets reported on this video, but as of yet, they cannot verify that the deaths of these cows were related to the heat wave or even where the video was taken. So keep that in mind as I talk about this. But basically, the United States has seen extreme temperatures for the last couple of days, and on June 13th, the temperatures reached 108 Fahrenheit in southwest Kansas. Matthew Laura, spokesperson for the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, told reporters that at least 2,000 cattle have died due to high temperatures and humidity as of June 14th. And that 2,000 figure comes from facilities that are helping ranchers dispose of the dead bodies. But... My question is, it's hot everywhere, so why aren't cattle dying everywhere? Did y'all see that episode of Yellowstone where the bad guys flew over the cattle fields and sprinkled poison hay from the air and the Dutton family woke up and all their cattle were dead and they had to burn all their fields? It's giving predictive programming. Mackenzie, I know you're watching this. What do you think? You think that these rolling blackouts, if they kill the electricity, all the food in the freezer and fridge will spoil? Not to belabor these Yellowstone jokes, but I think whoever funds PolitiFact needs to be taken to the train station, along with a few other characters. We have too many Jamies walking around and running things and not enough rips. What do y'all think? Are they sabotaging the supply chain? Are these fires and events intentional? You know, I always appreciate and enjoy your thoughts. And in the comment section of my last video on this topic, some comments of note pertain to some alternative explanations of these fires. But some commenters were saying that they worked in food manufacturing and they touched on the understaffing of these facilities, the lack of training, the lack of care from employees, and that these facilities have ovens, grills, fryers, kettles, hot oil, and it's just a fire hazard waiting to happen. Alongside the fact that maintenance on these facilities has been non-existent for the last two years during Corona. So that's just an alternate explanation of events that I thought I'd share. I found it interesting. Anyway, thank you all for watching, subscribing, and supporting my work on Patreon. Bye.